So what is powertrain simulation? So before we start ahead with powertrain simulation, let's try to understand that what is simulation first, right? So simulation is a representation of any physical system or any control system with, a, you know, with the help of a mathematical equation using a simulation toolboxes where we want to study the behavior of a system without physically having the system in place. To take an example, uh, let's say if you want to develop an engine and but we don't want to build the engine first at the place and but we want to study the characteristics of the engine, maybe its performance side, also on the emission side, where first we could build the model with the help of equations of physics and, you know, and deriving with the mathematics that we can represent any physical system with a, within the simulation toolbox. So when if you give any different conditions and we can check the influence of those conditions to the output of the engine, right? So that's, that's a very top level overview of what is basically the simulation is. So if you take an example for electric vehicles that we don't want to build the bike at the first place because it's very expensive. So we could build the mathematical model of the whole vehicle and then study the characteristics. So let's take an example that if you're going on a highway, what would be the RPM of the motor? And what would be the torque required uh, at the motor? What is the battery current required? And what is the battery temperature at that specific driving conditions? So like this, you, could, you want to basically study the uh, influence of the, the physical system and, and to study its behavior in the real world conditions, but without having the real world uh, hardware, right? That's basically the simulation in place. So when you come to the powertrain simulation specifically, let's take for the electric vehicle application more in detail. So if, if you want to develop a vehicle, right? So there will be a lot of uh, conditions which are incurred to develop that vehicle. So first and foremost thing that I know, where do you use this vehicle for? Is it used for carrying a load or is it used for driving in the city condition or is it used for application like an agriculture? or is it used for some applications like mining, right? Because of these uh, input parameters, your design of the powertrain will be highly dependent upon. Okay, what would be its battery, what would be the kind of motor that you're gonna use. So this is all depends upon what is the application for which you're using the vehicle, right? So you define those boundary conditions first as a powertrain uh, team or let's say as an OEM. So once those requirements are defined, so you could build the mathematical model of the whole vehicle uh, in toolbox like MATLAB or in, in toolboxes with the help of Simulink, right? So where you will be able to represent all of your vehicle, maybe it's uh, aerodynamic resistance, maybe it's rolling resistance, it's acceleration forces, all of these things you'll be able to represent uh, using the mathematical equations. And then you can run those uh, conditions uh, by giving different, different test conditions. Let's say for the acceleration condition, uh, for the credibility condition, or for the highway conditions or for the city conditions or if there is a, a scenario like you have a pillion also with you know, a rider and a pillion conditions like this you will be able to basically study the the influence of various parameters onto the vehicle and come to a conclusion that what should be my powertrain size what should be my transmission size and what would be my motor size or a battery size right so if you want to arrive at all of these things at a fundamental level, you could use powertrain simulation. In addition to this, if you want to study the influence of your auxiliary components, such as if you turn on the AC, what would be the energy consumption by the air conditioning system, right? And if you run at a very hotter temperature, if you want to perform battery cooling, or if you want to run your vehicle at a very cold temperature, and if you want to heat the battery pack, so what would be the, the energy that is required for cooling the battery, or what is the energy required for heating the battery, can also be studied using the powertrain simulations. Or if you want to develop your accurate uh, gear ratio uh, for your you know, vehicle applications, so where you want to optimize your motor operating points, and able to get the best out of the motor and also ensure that where you uh, uh, design the motor or size the motor uh, well within having the right gear ratios in place. Or if you want to talk about the regenerative energy uh, that is available during the braking or during the downhill condition, where you want to know what is the amount of region that can be put back into the battery and study the increase in range characteristics. Or in an overall way, if you want to study the powertrain uh, to define its uh, uh, final uh, you know, driver, dis driver distance as you can capture uh, and energy consumption per kilometer studies. Like this, you will be able to do a lot of uh, uh, simulations uh, to help you to gain the confidence 
uh, where you will be able to uh, come to a conclusion that okay, this is the right size of the powertrain that I should be able to develop, right? So that is basically why you perform powertrain simulations and that is the objectives of developing powertrain simulations. Thank you.